Hello everybody, welcome to Dude with a Fork, my name is Ken. On today's episode of Ken Cook Stuff, we are making chuck wagon beans. And I know you see a lot of recipes on the internet these that have uh, lots and lots of meat in them with beans, but this version I've always made for years, it doesn't have any meat, it's completely vegetarian. So if you're looking for a hearty, tasty, easy to make bean dish, this is the one. You probably already have the ingredients. Really simple to put it together, so let's get started. All right, so to make our vegetarian chuck wagon beans, we obviously need beans. I have here a pound of dried pinto beans. I'm going to go through and sort these. I'm gonna look for any little rocks, uh, any really weird looking beans, any that uh, just don't seem right. Any of these that are halves like this, I'm not gonna worry about. Um, they will just kind of fall apart and dissolve and, and add, add a little bit of starchy goodness. So that's good. Um, over here I have three smallish onions. This recipe normally takes two uh, large onions, but all I can get these days are these uh, little little tiny guys that are um, somewhere between a ping pong ball and a, and a tennis ball. It's just slightly smaller than a tennis ball. So I'm going to go ahead and use three of these. Now on the other end of that, I need two cloves of garlic crushed. And all I've got is this great big huge guy. So he's going to count as two. Um, I've got two bay leaves. I have... Uh, if I can make more noise here. I have half a teaspoon of freshly ground black pepper. I have half a teaspoon of Mexican oregano. And if you want, if you don't have Mexican oregano, uh, you can use regular Italian or Greek oregano. Uh, that's fine. The oregano police are not going to come to your house or the bean police are not going to come to your house. And look, uh, you know, I mean, it, that kind of looks like regular oregano, but I bought this at the Mexican store. It's imported from Mexico. Um, and you crush it up and it does have a very different scent to regular oregano that you're used to. So it's, it's similar, but it's a little bit different. Uh, and then the last thing I have is uh, a teaspoon of seasoned salt. You can use regular salt. I like to use seasoned salt just so I can get a little bit of extra flavor in there. And I know some people are gonna say, well, you can't salt your beans, it'll make them tough. But uh, that's not really true. If you put salt in your beans and they come out tough, it's probably because they were really old to begin with. And uh, that is not going to be too much of an issue with these beans uh, for a couple of reasons. These are pinot beans, and so you can tell um, when pinot beans get old because they'll start to get really, really dark. Um, actually, almost the color of like light red uh, kidney beans. And this is far from it. And also, um, I'm going to give these a quick soak. I'm going to do the quick soak method. Soaking your beans ahead of time doesn't really save you any cooking time, maybe half an hour total. Uh, but I'm taking this to some family members who aren't used to uh, beans as often as I am. And so by, by quick soaking, I can add a couple of teaspoons of, of baking, uh, baking soda in with the, the quick soak water, and that's gonna take some of the gassiness out of it. So I'm gonna come back to you when uh, those beans are done, and we'll see what all that looks like. In the meantime, I'm gonna go ahead and chop up these onions. See you then. All right, there is, uh, I forgot to mention this earlier, there is an optional ingredient that you can put in. This is completely optional, um, but uh, it's a jalapeno pepper. And yes, jalapeno peppers can be quite spicy, but they have a lot of flavor, in fact, there is a local microbrewery uh, in my town that makes a beer called Jalapa. There it is. That uh, is flavored with jalapenos. And it's not really spicy. Jalapeno peppers have a lot of flavor in them. Um, so I want to get some of this flavor, but without the heat. Now, if I wanted the heat, I would just take this guy and just chop him up, seeds and all. But I just want the flavor. So what I have done is I've just cut this guy in half and I have scooped out the, the veins and the seeds, which is where most of the heat is, like 90% of the heat uh, is along those uh, uh, parts that I cut out. So um, I'm just gonna throw these two halves in there. We're gonna have a lot of jalapeno flavor, but not a lot of heat. Um, this is a trick you can use uh, anytime you want the flavor, but not the heat. Um, I'm gonna fish these out after the beans are done and just and just chuck them in the compost. Um, I mean, you could eat them, go for it. Um, yeah, maybe I will actually, but there's not gonna be a whole lot left to them, assuming I can find them, so yes. But this is completely optional. 
Um, you know, I mean, if you want to be really daring, put, put two peppers in there. So up to you, totally optional. Okay, so uh, you can see I've drained my beans. I've got them back in the pot. Um, these are looking actually kind of dark. I'm wondering if these beans were a little older than I thought. But anyway, um, we're gonna go with it. So we're gonna throw in our two halves of our, our pepper and gonna go in with all of our onion and garlic here. And again, I know, seems like a lot. Um, we shall see. And oh, get every get every get everybody in there. Um, put that here. I have my spices and salt on here. Now this recipe, I've all I, as as I got it, it was a pound of dried beans and nine cups of water, and that's always worked. But I've pre-soaked these, so I'm going to go in with seven cups of water, and see where that gets us. And. That looks just about right. We want to be a little above the level of the beans. And of course, keep in mind, these onions are going to give off some moisture as they cook. And so is that pepper, uh, although there isn't really a lot of pepper in there. So I think I'm going to add just a touch more water. Uh, remember, you can always add more later, but if you have to cook it out, then you end up um, overcooking your beans. So I'm going to turn this up on medium and I'm just going to bring this to a boil and then turn it down to a simmer. And after that, I'm going to let it cook for about an hour and a half, two hours until those beans are tender, at which point I will uh, taste the seasoning and see if it needs a little bit extra salt. Um, I'll fish out the bay leaves if, if, it, if it doesn't and we're, we'll be ready to serve. So I'm going to bring this up to a boil. Um, I've got the lid. Oh, here's the, here's the lid. So always better to put a lid on something if you're going to bring it up to a boil. Look, you can see my overhead light. Um, so anyway, we'll come back in a couple minutes after this is up to a boil. All right, so these beans just came to a boil. Uh, I had the lid on, so I'm going to turn these way, way down um, because I just want them to simmer, and I'm just going to give them a stir here. You can see a lot of... Um, a lot of foam on there and I'm thinking I don't often do the the pre-soak with the baking soda um, so I don't remember if that is like okay this is this is getting rid of the gassiness um, I don't know but anyway the whole point is we caught these before they sat here and boiled forever we want a very low simmer just like you see here if you boil your beans um, really hard uh, then like Patsy Cline they'll just fall to pieces and that's not really what we're looking for here. Although, because these are pinno beans, we could make refried beans with them. Um, but yeah, we, we want whole beans in this. We don't want, um, we don't want uh, things to fall apart here. So I'm just gonna put a lid on here. Just set it slightly ajar like this so that some of the steam can escape. Um, I also have uh, my measuring cup right here with a little bit of water. And because this is a plastic measuring cup, I'm gonna set it off to the side on the counter, not put it on the stove, cause then I jiggle things and it gets hot. And the next thing you know, I smell burning plastic. Um, so, but I'm gonna have that standing by just in case I look at these and I go, ah, those look like they need more water. So these are gonna go for about an hour and a half, two hours, really kind of depends on a couple of things. It depends on number one, uh, how how uh, much of a simmer you have these at and number two it depends on how old your beans were because older beans take longer to cook but oh my gosh I can smell that oregano and garlic in there already which is amazing um, uh, and it also depends on how often you go in here and give things a stir and I, I am gonna go in here and stir one of the most important things with beans is that you do give them a stir every once in a while because uh, this is a stove and all of the heat is uh, down here at the bottom and not at the top. So uh, what will happen is if you don't give them a stir, the beans on the bottom will be overcooked by the time the beans on the top are, are tender, or you know, you'll know you give them a stir at the end and you'll have a bunch of overcooked beans mixed with undercooked beans. So I'm just gonna set a timer for 20 minutes. I'll come back, take a look at them, give them a stir, and I'm gonna do that um, every 20 minutes until they're tender. It's super simple. Uh, the best thing to do always is to set a timer 
and uh, I have one like this. So I can say, um, I got this at Costco just ages ago. So um, I did a preset for 20 seconds and I'm just gonna start. Not 20 seconds, 20 minutes. So when this goes off, I'll come back and I'll take a look. And the whole point of this is that, you know, I can say, um, you know, beans. I, I you know, I, I, yeah, I, I don't know how many times, I, I, I do not keep track of four things at a time. And even if I did keep track of four things at a time, I, I think that's kind of gimmicky because I can, I can probably remember what's what. But anyway, this is what I use. Uh, timers are the greatest thing in the world in, in the kitchen, especially when you're doing things that take a while to cook. So I highly encourage you to get something like this. Um, okay, so we've been cooking for about 20 minutes. You can see a lot of that foam has, has disappeared, so I'm thinking that is indeed from the uh, baking soda that I added. And look at that. I mean, there was a there was a ton of onions in here and you can see um, they are really, really starting to cook down. Um, the broth is looking, it's a nice tannish brown color. It's not that deep red, uh, which means that if we did have old beans, uh, I think we've uh, flushed a lot of that uh, old bean flavor out of there. I'm just going to reach in here with a spoon real quick and uh, just see what the, uh, see how the seasoning tastes. Um, this is always a good thing here. So, mm. ah, that's really good. Probably will need a little bit more salt. All right, so here we are. Um, I have, um, these have cooked for about an hour. So I spooned some up in a bowl. I took out the, uh, the big chunks of jalapeno pepper and the bay leaves. And I did find this needed just a little bit more salt, uh, just for my taste, but that's me. I like salty things. Um, but not, I didn't add too much because I'm gonna put a little bit of cheese on here. And I did garnish it with some slices, very thin slices of serrano pepper. Um, because uh, I forgot to buy um, cilantro when I was at Aldi yesterday. And cilantro would be lovely on this. Uh, in place of the cheese, you could also put uh, a little bit of sour cream, but um, I didn't buy that either because I forgot. So I'm just gonna dig in and taste these. Oh my gosh. And for some odd reason, my camera on my phone just took a picture. What the heck? It just, it's weird. Anyway, so, oh yeah, let's, um, a little bit of, a little bit of this on here. Um, I'm not grabbing the Serranos because those are hot. So I just want to see what this tastes like without that. Mmm. Yeah. Uh, yeah, this is it, folks. Chuck wagon beans. Oh my gosh. Come, uh, well, I put cheese in here. That doesn't make them, that doesn't make them <laughs> vegan. Uh, but you could put vegan cheese in here and then you would have completely vegan beans. But even as it is, there's no meat in here. So cholesterol is very minimal. Um, I do want to say, look, if you go on my website, I'm not going to give you a big uh, song and dance about how, you know, my family came to this planet from a different universe, you know, millions of years ago. And we've been, been enjoying American cuisine ever since. But uh, I will, uh, you know, I just get right to the point. Here's the recipe. Um, so uh, you can go on there and get a free uh, printable copy of these uh, of this recipe with the nutrition facts. And I said this makes 12 servings. So it's they're, they're going to be about three quarters of a cup. So this is probably two servings here. I'm going to be honest with you. So in one serving, which is about half of this, we've got 141 calories. That's that's pretty good. Even even in this container, I'm, I'm right at 300 or just under 300 calories, which is pretty amazing. Uh, a gram of fat, so two grams of fat. I've got more because I put on cheese. Uh, 208 milligrams of sodium, which is just 9% of your daily value. Because I did have a teaspoon of, of, of salt in here. There's going to be a little bit more from the cheese, but not a lot. But still, uh, even double this, you're, it's still uh, pretty low. Um, compared to packaged foods. A lot of potassium. Uh, you're going to get uh, over a thousand milligrams in this, about 565 milligrams in a, in a serving. 
and three quarters of a cup will get you six grams of fiber and that is the one nutrient that everybody's missing so in here you're going to get 12 grams of fiber which is what just about half somewhere between a half and a third of what you need in a day and man is this just tasty tasty fiber so yeah i mean for the for the cost of a few beans and i didn't do the cost i i didn't figure it out but um i mean mainly it's beans you know and a, and a pepper which you might have uh, out of your garden but even even so just buying one jalapeno pepper at the grocery store it's like a like a quarter so um this is extraordinarily tasty extraordinarily nutritious and extraordinarily budget friendly uh good food so yeah um gonna get one more bite with the serrano pepper on here because oh man amazing mm. Mm -mm 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 -mm. i'm gonna go make some cord bread and that's it folks thanks so much for watching uh if you make this i would love to hear your comments and see what you thought about it um, so please, if you have any questions, you can also leave a comment down below. Please like this video, or if you want to see more content like this, please go ahead and subscribe. It is completely free. Just a reminder, you don't need to write down any of the recipes or any of the ingredients because uh, there's a link to my website down below where you get uh, a printable copy of the, of the recipe. There's no ads. There's no me telling a story or anything like that. It's just, you know, let's get straight to the recipe. So... Um, as always, thanks so much for watching. Please enjoy your food, eat great food, stay safe, and power to the proletariat. We will see you next time.